Hello friends, Candor here. I have another video to share with you, but this is probably not going to be interesting for most of my viewers. This is designed for viewers interested in embroidery. More specifically, those interested in what I did to my embroidery machine. This all came about when I was trying to find a way to connect my embroidery machine to my computer wirelessly and was flummoxed by how difficult it was and how much I hated being tethered to the machine via a networking cable. It ended up with me getting a Latte Panda, which I have done a video on previously. This will also demonstrate my thought processes and how I utilize equipment I actually own. Now, back then, I really wasn't making YouTube videos, and as such, I had never really recorded much of what I was doing. Honestly, the thought never occurred to me, and I didn't really think anyone would be interested in what I was working on anyways. Boy, was I wrong. Some of my viewers have expressed an interest in what I was doing, as have other people I have run into that are in the embroidery field. I now find myself in a position where I would really like to explain what I did to help others in my predicament, but don't have much material recorded for step-by-step -step explanations. All I can offer is a few crappy photos I took at certain stages that I use for my own personal reference and try to give a verbal explanation. If you don't own or work with an Amaya embroidery machine, there is a very high chance you won't find this useful and may not like it very much. I figured I would say that now to prevent anyone from watching something for a while before they realize this isn't for them. If you would like to see how it is that I use something I showcased earlier and what I did to make it all work, then stick around. If you feel this isn't going to be for you, well, no hard feelings and I understand. With that said, let's jump right in and see if I can't make this video work. I used to be an embroiderer and had my own embroidery business. I ran out of my home for a few years. Now, the machine that I chose was this Amaya XTS machine. This is not your average run-of-the-mill machine most home hobbyists would have had, and even those are still several thousand dollars. This is an actual commercial embroidery machine that I bought as a hobby that turned into a business. Now, the only issue I had with this machine was that it turned out you couldn't connect a computer wirelessly to it. I had to have a network cable attached. This posed a few problems. First, I didn't feel like spending hundreds more on a dedicated laptop that would do nothing more than run the embroidery machine. I figured with the machine, the software, hoops, bobbins, thread, backing and supplies and whatnot, I had about twenty to $22,000 already invested into my hobby. Second, the graphical digitizing portion can be a resource hog and most laptops either wouldn't handle some of the larger pieces I was working on, nor did I want to spend my time digitizing on a smaller laptop screen. Thirdly, if I wanted to move the machine to another room, I had to run cables or move the computer to that room. Not practical if you have ever seen my PC, since at the time I had four monitors connected to it and it was and still is a beast of a machine to move. All I really wanted was a way to wirelessly get the files to the embroidery machine and run the Amaya OS software, which requires next to nothing of a machine to perform this function. So when I found a tiny SBC, single board computer, called the Latte Panda, I was pretty sure I could use that to my advantage. It already had everything I needed and could accommodate a 7-inch touchscreen without any extra power requirements. It came with Windows 10 pre-installed, had Wi-Fi built in, and an Ethernet networking port, three USB ports, and some other features that I didn't need for this project, but still useful later on. And the best part is that it ran off of 5 volt USB power port, which means that I could literally run this on a battery pack if I needed. 
The first thing I needed to figure out was how I was going to power this and came up with the brilliant idea to make my own custom extension cord of sorts consisting of an electrical wall outlet that had two USB sockets and could deliver up to two amps, which is exactly what the Latte Panda requires. I printed this custom box that allowed me to feed power to it using the same type of cable that the embroidery machine and PC power supplies use. I could then plug the embroidery machine into the outlet on the box and the Latte Panda as well. All I needed to do was to take some double-sided sticky tape or strong Velcro and attach it to some place on the rear of the machine. The other thing I did was to add a remote switch, like this one, that can control up to three devices. The machine's power switch is located in the back and quite frankly is a bit of a hassle to get to, and I even have a story about how that switch saved a coworker from a serious accident when she accidentally got her finger too close to the machine and impaled her finger causing the machine to lock up and freeze with her finger stuck in the machine. The emergency switch for some reason did not fully stop the power to the machine, but that is a story for another time. Bottom line, I seriously advise people to use a quality remote switch as it makes it easier to turn the machines on and off, especially when you have multiple machines against a wall. I did this at a shop I worked at and everyone, including management, thought it was a brilliant idea. I ran the remotes for years and never had to replace the batteries. Now that I had the power situation resolved, I needed to find a way to attach the Latte Panda to the machine as well as a screen. I started making a prototype made from thin hobby plywood, hot glue, and sticky tape. I purchased a cheap, clear acrylic case for the Latte Panda and just used sticky tape to adhere it to the back of the plywood, which I hot glued to the control panel. Overall, it worked, and the placement didn't look too bad, and it all fit into the footprint I was looking for, albeit a little flimsy for obvious reasons. I also purchased a small wireless keyboard mouse combo as a backup interface. Later, I decided a more vertical layout would be better. Since the horizontal layout didn't allow for certain setting screens to correctly display on such a small screen. This made it more difficult to change settings. And unless you've ever used this machine, I don't think I could accurately describe what I mean unless I had video showing this issue. Whoever programmed this software didn't expect anyone to use such a tiny screen, I guess. A few of my issues could have been solved had I been the type of person that embedded the changes into the design when digitizing, but unless you are the digitizer, you can't do that. Using pre-made or purchased designs don't allow for this unless you want to convert them to the native format for the Amaya, which inevitably changes things in the design, requiring far too much time to fix. So, I set out to design and 3D print a solution. What I came up with is, I first printed a round rod and inserted a 10 millimeter nut into the end. The control panel is attached via a 10 millimeter nut, which keeps the panel from rotating around when you press the buttons. This rod just basically does the same thing as the nut, but also extends a rod so that I can attach a bracket. The bracket I designed is a simplistic one that just slides onto the rod and is secured with two thumb screws, which allow me to angle the screen where I like it. While difficult to see in the photos, Maybe this artistic rendering I did will help explain it a little bit better. The only other thing I needed was an enclosure for the touchscreen. This is a simple two-piece design where the screen sits into a groove and the two halves screw together using three millimeter nuts and bolts. There are four posts on the back to attach the Latte Panda. The entire thing just simply rests into the groove of the bracket, allowing for easy insertion and removal if needed. Once you plug the networking cable from the embroidery machine into the Latte Panda and attach the USB power cord, you simply boot the unit, connect to your home network, and you're done. Now, I have a server at the house, so it made it easy for me to get to my files. I simply save my files to my Y drive, so I just load and save my designs from there. Now I could have alternatively shared a file on my PC via Windows File Share and done it that way. But with the server, I can now access my files from anywhere in the world if needed. While this is a cheap working solution, it isn't without its pitfalls. What I learned were a few things. 
One, I would have been better off with a 10 inch touchscreen, but that meant changing the designs as no screens available in that size plug directly into the Latte Panda and usually require an external power source. Things have changed since then, but at the time, this is what I could find. If I had to do this again, I would also change the screen bracket a bit to accommodate either a new case, such as this one that I printed, or add some type of an adapter to allow for an external antenna giving me better Wi-Fi range. The Amaya OS software has changed since then, and the newer version 11 allows for touchscreens and has a specific screen mode for that, which I think would work better than my version. Another thing I would probably do is get an aluminum rod and bore and tap a 10 millimeter thread into that. The plastic rod I made, while it does work, still left me a bit concerned that it could break more easily than I would have liked. Plus, I could have tightened the rod more had it not been plastic, making the control panel more secure. Again, this all does work as I designed, but I still would have rather had metal parts. Oh, if I only had a metal lathe to work with. Hmm, that gives me something to think about. In the end, I had a working solution that maybe wasn't as ideal as I would have liked, but it did solve my problem. Since the Amaya uses an old networking protocol called NetBuoy, you can't simply make this a wireless device. I understand why they did this and is far too technical to get into here, but since that protocol is old and came out long before Wi-Fi was even a possibility, it doesn't support Wi-Fi protocols. If you have one of these machines and like what I did and want to ask questions, I'm always up for that. Maybe this gives you an idea of something you could try or want to try yourself. Again, I know this video isn't for everyone, and if you stuck around to the end, I thank you immensely. Thank you to all my viewers for sticking around and watching this. And as always, if you like what you see, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon to be notified the next time I release a video. Until next time, folks, have fun, take care, and have a great day. Bye.